I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 187, Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits, Volume 1. Released in 2000, this game was developed by Digital Eclipse and published by Midway. This one's a bit strange in that it's a compilation cart. Some of you may think I should play all these games individually, but the games themselves are arcade games. The entire compilation is one in 64 game. While I spent plenty of time in arcades growing up, these games are before my time. I grew up with the likes of beat-em-ups like Simpsons, X-Men, or Battletoads. Also, plenty of light gun games like Area 51, Maximum Force, or Time Crisis. But honestly, I was one of those kids playing all those stupid gambling games, trying to get tickets for crappy prizes rather than playing the actual fun stuff. Anyway, I did play a Namco arcade compilation on the PS1 growing up. None of the games in this are familiar to me though. Hopefully they're fun. Let's get into it. When you boot up the game, there's a very low frame rate zoom into the menu area. Basically, it looks like a bunch of arcade cabinets floating in the Tron universe. There are six games total on the cart. Sinistar, Spy Hunter, Joust, Root Beer Tapper, Robotron 2084, and Defender. There's also an arcade trivia. I decided I'd start with Root Beer Tapper for no real reason at all. Some of you may know this game as Tapper with Budweiser branding. It was rebranded to Root Beer Tapper because there were a lot of kids playing and people didn't like that. The way this one works is there are four bars with a tap at the end of each. Customers will slowly progress down the bar toward the tap and I have to fill glasses of root beer to push them back. If a customer reaches the end or a glass shatters, I lose. Occasionally, a customer will leave a tip, which if you grab, causes some dancers to spawn. This distracts a few of the customers to give you some breathing room. Now, I have to ask, what kind of business is this? Why are there four bars with four doors leading into this barren room? And why is there just one guy working? Like, this is the 80s. Were they really making people do four people's jobs even all the way back then? I lost on the second level because there were two glasses sliding down perfectly in sync. You might think a clear condition for this is to break the high score. However, this game has no high scores listed, so you could just get one point and win. Maybe I could beat the current world record of 14.8 million, but that seems a bit unreasonable too. We'll figure something out. After beating level 2, it starts a bonus game. This rather shady looking character shakes up all but one of the cans. Why? Well, I don't know. But maybe the game's not supposed to make sense. After that, it brought me to a new environment where I was working outside and there was a blimp. I think we're supposed to be at a football stadium. I started picking up on a few optimizations here, like being able to screen wrap from the edges or that you could swap to a new lane while being ran down a different lane to pick up a glass. I also learned some new ways to fail, like how if people are distracted by the dancers, they aren't going to grab that glass of root beer. Sometimes the glasses come back perfectly in sync like you saw before. There's a bit of a window of leniency here though, so timing the lane swap will allow you to prevent both from falling. If you fail the bonus game, it's pretty tragic. Poor guy gets hit with TV static after a hard day's work. After beating three rounds of the football stadium, it does another bonus game, then takes me to a gross rundown bar where the root beer is coming out of kegs. There are four unique environments in total before it loops back to the first. So I decided I needed to beat all four to clear this game. This new bar makes things a bit more confusing by splitting the direction the customers come from too. It takes a bit of getting used to, but this game's pretty fun once you get in the flow of things. Basically try to burst down as many customers as possible right when the round starts. You want to learn how many frames you need to hold the tap to completely fill the mug. Too little and it won't slide down the bar. Too many and you waste time sitting at the tap doing nothing. Also, knowing how many customers are at each bar is crucial. Keeping a mental note of that can be tricky. After a bit of grinding and game overs, I was becoming frustrated with the way this game was presented. In a real arcade, you could just pump quarters in to try again. Turns out there is a settings menu where you can adjust your lives and how often you gain extra ones. Look, it may seem cheap, but hear me out. I still have to beat all the levels. When you lose a life, you don't gain any advantage. It just starts you back at the beginning of the level you failed on. This just prevents me from having to replay the first couple bars over and over. I didn't touch the difficulty. Honestly, I'm not really sure what it even does. I'm loaded rich and drive a Mustang GT, so I would have like a trillion quarters if I were at a real arcade right now. 
Upon beating the second round of the rundown bar, the bartender decided to launch a glass at the ceiling and caused a bird to fall down. That reminds me of when I worked at Walmart in college and there was a nest of birds in the rafters of the produce aisle. Uh, yeah, I didn't like that. Sometimes you get frustrating scenarios like this woman who is taking ages to finish her drink. I can't send her another one to push her out until she's done, so it became too late and other customers showed up. It gets real stressful. Or something like this happens where you're clearing out the final people, but basically the frame before they despawn, some new patrons show up. Ugh, it just never ends, man. In the end, it took me like 40 minutes or so of grinding to take down this final round of the bar. It is so hard. I felt like I was frame perfectly drawing the root beer every time, but it just wasn't enough. One more location to go. The final bar is in outer space where we serve aliens. I won't lie, the fact that the bars are gray makes it a bit harder to see the glasses sliding down as well as I did in the others. Maybe it's intentional to make you lose the... The dancers here are some kind of snake aliens or something. They look nothing at all like the people coming in for drinks. All in all, it took only like 20 minutes to get through the space bars. I kind of feel like I got lucky, or maybe I just got better at the game. It was weird that this was quicker than the last, but yeah. It loops back to the starting bar from here, and you can just go on forever. Or until the game runs out of memory. I then ran a poll with my chat to see which one to play next. They wanted Joust, so that's what I did. Joust did have a high score set by the world-renowned Joust Williams, even better than Todd Rogers. So the way Joust works is you are a yellow among us riding an ostrich and you're fighting the red among us. You tap A to flap the wings, causing you to ascend a bit. The goal is to land on the other people's heads. When you do, they drop a little orb that you pick up for points. If it takes too long, it hatches into a new enemy. Seems simple enough, but it can get tricky. There's an element of acceleration, and it's something I was not used to at all. Upon reaching wave 3, part of the ground burned away. This is not good, because having somewhere to land is really helpful. After flapping around for a bit in this wave, a loud noise played and a pterodactyl appeared. I figured I'd land on its head like all the others, but nope, that just killed me. Alright then. I made it to wave 4 where I got an extra life at 20,000 points. I also somehow clipped through the ground? Not sure if this is a bug in this version or part of the original game. Sometimes you've got to make split second decisions. That orb is on the bottom, but if I try to grab it, the enemies above me will surely descend and blast me. Not the right call there. Now I was on wave 5, which it said was an egg wave. Oh, I guess those are eggs, not orbs. There were like 12 eggs that all spawned at once and a ton of birds showed up to bring in new enemies. Thankfully I reacted quick and only one enemy fully appeared. At wave 6, the main platform in the middle disappeared. Oh god, that was the thing I camped under. You may think camping at the top of the screen is a great strat. After all, they have to hit you from above to kill you. There are two problems with that. One is the pterodactyl, which can kill you from below. The other is unless you're able to mash at like 60 frames per second, you'll eventually get unlucky and have one of them hit you when you bounce off the top of the screen. Not to mention, sometimes the hit detections are questionable as to whether they're above you or not. I was at 48,000 points at this game over, with 109,000 being the amount to beat Joust Williams. Surely it can't be that hard, right? By the way, what is the point of this? Why are these people fighting like this? Like, surely I should have some teammates to help me, right? I don't know. Old arcade games were weird. So I let one of the eggs hatch and it turned into a blue enemy. This guy is so fast. Like, when he shows up, you better be ready. Not necessarily horizontal movement, but the vertical. It just goes nuts. After a half hour or so, I made it to wave 7. More of the platforms disappeared. Aw oh man, they're all gonna be gone eventually, aren't they? If you're wondering, no, I didn't change the lives this time. Because there's actually a high score to shoot for, I left it all at the default. Even though I've got more quarters than the Federal Reserve. Man, there were just way too many dudes above me. The only realistic way to get out from the bottom is just go randomly and hope for the best. I'm sure there's strats to infinitely loop this game, but, well, I don't know them. I'd now made it to wave 8 where it told me to beware of the unbeatable pterodactyl. Hmm, that's clearly hinting there's a secret to that little guy. Clearly the secret's not landing on its head though. Why was I still trying that? It took me around an hour just to make it to wave 7 again, only to instantly die. This game was hard. I was just dying so much, there was no easy way out, I just had to get good. 
One way to help with that was learning the pattern for the egg wave. There's no reason wave 5 should be scary, so if I can get rid of all the eggs every time it shows up, that's one less place to die at. On the same run, I managed to kill the pterodactyl in wave 8. You have to line up the joust with its mouth. I think I got lucky this time by it being in sync with my standing position, but whatever. Things were going so well this run. I had all my lives and I was on to wave 9. However, the middle platform I was hiding under disappeared. Then came the downfall. I lost 3 lives in the span of about 20 seconds. I was only 30,000 away from Joust Williams, but this just wasn't going to cut it. By the way, if you want to see full playthroughs of these games, I have all these streams archived on my alt channel The Beast Plays, which is linked in the description of all these videos. I made it to wave 10, which was another egg wave. The platforms came back, probably to make this work out. I had the strats, but unfortunately, I didn't have the execution. There were like 6 guys flying around everywhere. And just like that, all my lives were gone. The best run I'd had, but it didn't matter. Joust Williams was too good. It took me around 4 hours in total to get this, but I did finally take down Joust Williams. God, look how fast that blue guy goes. It's ridiculous. All in all, Joust is a fun game, but very frustrating. It's a great test of skill, and I could see how it became so popular. I thought it was kind of neat how if you got first place, you got to put in more than just three characters for your name. Well, with hopefully the hardest game out of the way, we had another poll, and Spy Hunter was chosen. I had no clue what the heck this game was. So, truthfully, I still don't really understand this one super well. You're in a car driving down the road, and you've got a machine gun. The score slowly builds up over time. I have a machine gun and I can blow people up. There were lots of cars that were out to get me and they would do things like send spikes out from their tires and launch me off the road. After time runs out, you've got one life left and then it ends the run. Well, that was really fun. Apparently this game is supposed to have music, but you can barely hear it. One of the things to do is occasionally a weapons van will appear and you can drive in the back to get more than just the machine gun. This one gave me an oil slick, which I'm supposed to use to kill people behind me, I guess. There was a toggle to swap between low and high speed, and the high is just way too fast to react. You get more points when using it, though. The high score here was only 20,000, so hopefully it's easier than Joust. The way these cards look reminds me of Grand Theft Auto 2. I played so much of that game. Better to reminisce about that than try to make any sense out of this one. Look, I'm aware this game was quite popular, but I just don't get it. I was actually surviving more than two seconds after the time ran out and I blasted some dudes with the smokescreen attack. After like 15 minutes or so, I broke the 20k barrier and the high score was mine. I decided to now change the extra lives mechanic to every 1000 points so I could actually try to see something happen in this game. A helicopter shows up after a while. What the heck am I supposed to do about that? After a while, the game broke and stopped giving me lives, so I figured, oh well. I beat the high score, which was the only real thing to achieve here. 3 down. The next game chosen was Robotron. We actually played Robotron 64 all the way back at game 64, so I was familiar with this concept. The goal here was to beat old Willy Electrix with the high score of 151,782. It's a twin stick shooter. In this case, you move with the D-pad and shoot with the C buttons. Yeah, that makes sense. You run around the screen, shoot all the bad guys, and try to save the family members walking around. The levels get more complex as you go on. There are these big green guys that block your shots and can't be killed. Also, just general hazards lying around, or even ones that move. The more waves you go in, the harder it gets. I actually used to be a big achievement hunter on the Xbox 360, and this game had one of the rarest ones. You had to beat wave 100, which after playing this for myself, I can see why it's so rare. Thankfully in this case, the high score is nowhere near that. There's this guy Frank Rizzo in my chat who loves this game. He claims to be a god gamer at it from back in the day, even better than Billy Mitchell. Making it to wave 5 brought in these brain enemies, as well as these snakes that zoom around the screen. It's wild how much faster they are than me. I got a game over with about 20,000 points off the high score after a few attempts. To be fair, I consider myself decent at these types of games. I played so much Smash TV growing up, and I was really, really good at Geometry Wars on the 360. Robotron's a tough game. The best way to get points is 1. Don't die. But 2. Rescue the family members. Each successive one you get in the same wave gives more points than the last. If an enemy touches one of them, they die. 
The best way to survive is to get good at kiting. Run away from the enemies while shooting backwards. But you also have to pay attention to where you're running, too. It's a lot to take in. I'd crushed the high score at this point, and now I was on wave 10 where the obstacles are just 2084. I got a game over at wave 13, quite a ways off that wave 100 achievement, but I still took first place. Just like Joust, you can put more than three characters for your name if you are the all-time top. I again did the thing where I made it give me extra lives like crazy so I could see all the unique waves. Apparently there are 40 in total. Yeah, this one's quite fun. Just the concept of an 8-directional shooter is, really. Only two games left to go now, and we chose Sinistar. Literally no clue what the heck that is. The score to beat this time was 39,045 by Wit. So in this one you fly around in space while these red guys move way too fast. There's a radar at the top to help navigate the chaos. It wasn't really clear what was going on though. Enemies would bump into me, but I just wouldn't die. It kept telling me I needed to mine 9 crystals to make Cinnabon. Aw oh, dude, I love Cinnabon. That sounds delicious. After a while, the huge ship launched itself straight at me, and I was obliterated. Yeah, this game wasn't all that great. I feel like the enemies just move too fast. You shoot these asteroids to make the crystals come off, indicated by the little white dots in the top left. With these, I could shoot Cinnabombs at the big guy and some chunks broke off. Still died in the end though. On my next run, I noticed it was being built early on. I could shoot it to make it just not appear. Is this thing called Sinistar by the way? Yeah, take that. All your hard work down the drain. They managed to build it anyway, but I was doing a good job kiting it with the bombs. This thing reminds me of one of the bosses in Smash TV. It took 15 minutes or so and I had beaten the score. It seems finding Sinistar before it gets built is key. I still didn't really understand why the enemies just bounced off me sometimes though. I also wonder how these high scores were selected. Was it just the best one of the devs working on the game could do? Seems like they varied a lot. I ended up with 71,000 points, not too shabby. Well, seems like that's about all there is for Sinistar. One final game to go. Defender was the final game. I apparently got this game confused with Missile Command because I had definitely never seen this one. So in this, you move from left to right and shoot the bad guys. Annoyingly, there was no auto fire, so I had to constantly button mash. There's a radar at the top that I guess is slightly useful. When you die, it looks like a firework going off. The score to beat was 21,270 by Dr. J. Once all the enemies have been killed, it ends the wave and advances to the next. It's a pretty simple game. I suppose the fact that you move in both directions is kind of neat for how old it is. There was just absolute chaos happening sometimes. It was hard to tell what was a projectile and what was just debris from an enemy exploding. One of the goals of this is to prevent people from being abducted by the aliens. I'm sure it doesn't hurt for them to drop down from the stratosphere like that. Another thing you can do is launch a bomb if you get in trouble. It's basically a panic button to kill all the enemies on screen in a pinch. I feel like there's not too much to say about this one. It's pretty basic in my opinion, but it's okay. I ended up beating the high score after half an hour or so, and with that, all six games had their scores beaten. I was the arcade champion. Well, now it's the final thing in the game, and the one unique thing that isn't just running old games in an emulator. The arcade trivia. So it asks these questions that have three multiple choice answers. Like, how am I supposed to know what bands inspired the bar in Tapper? I only listen to good stuff like Taylor Swift, not this boomer music. Also, what the heck? John Newcomer is a legend. I should submit my resume in a rubber chicken too. It's neat that it's here and you can easily memorize the correct answers given there are only three choices. I kept going until I got a perfect 15 out of 15. Well, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits, Volume 1. This is a really weird one for this challenge. None of these games really have endings, so I feel beating the built-in high scores is a good way to handle it. I tried to show off the content available for all of them, but I'm sure I missed things. I'm just not super familiar with them. It's neat that it's here, but this probably felt underwhelming to play back in the day. I imagine this was a game adults played more than the kids, but maybe I'm wrong. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd definitely go with Robotron, although Root Beer Tapper's awesome too. Joust is good, even if it makes me super salty. Sinistar and Defender were okay, and I just do not like Spy Hunter. All in all, I had a pretty good time playing this. 
There's no real reason to play this version other than the arcade trivia, but if you have an N64, I guess it's an accessible way to play them. It was pretty fun, and I think this was a good way to get my first exposure to these arcade classics. I gave Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits Volume 1 a 7 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 7 out of 10 for difficulty. Alright, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. We had a randomized marble race to determine which game was next, so here's how that played out. Or skip to the timestamp on screen to skip straight to the game selection. What we got here? NASCAR 2000 in the house. Perfect Dark, Madden, Tom and Jerry, Dual Heroes. They're all here. Three, two, one, go. All right, they are off, folks. Who's it going to be out first? It is 64 Osimo, Snowboard Kids 2, Cruising USA, Ocarina of Time up there once again. It's like it's rigged, except it's actually not. Goemon's Great Adventure, Banjo-Kazooie Cruisin' USA currently in the lead, slightly, but it's way too early to tell right now. Cruisin' USA coming down the left side. Will anybody opt for the middle route? It does appear some are. The next Bomberman game, I see Tigger's Honey Hunt as well. Probably a banger. Um, and Mario Golf is in dead last. I don't think we're playing that one next, chat. And it's Bakuretsu Muteki Bangyo. <laughs> Whatever the heck that is. Wonder Project J2 Snowboard Kids 2. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98 as well. And uh, 40 Winks, our only unlicensed game on the list. Wonder Project J2, Snowboard Kids 2, Cruising USA, the top three currently. We're coming in to the washing machine now, and our Marines has fallen. I don't see how it happened, and Snowboard Kids 2 immediately out. Very well done. Pachinko is down. Thank God we know we're not playing Pachinko. Wonder Project J2 Extreme G2 Mario no Photopy as well, which is essentially Photoshop. That will be a lot of fun. And Snowboard Kids 2 gets held up quite a bit, and that allows Wonder Project J2 to capitalize on that error. Wonder Project J2 and Snowboard Kids 2, but they bump into each other, and Cruising USA is making a play. Cruising USA is slightly in the lead. GoldenEye is right there as well. I did not even know GoldenEye was in contention. GoldenEye in second place. We got Cruising USA, GoldenEye, Snowboard Kids 2, 40 Links, Wonder Project J2. Cruising USA gets held up quite a bit there. And now it's Wonder Project J2 slightly in the lead. We got some split paths here. I don't know which one is faster. Wonder Project J2, Cruising USA, 40 winks. Cruising USA opts for the left side, 40 winks. Wonder Project on the right. I think the right side might be optimal. I'm not sure though. 40 winks is in the lead. A little out of control, nearly bounces off. And now it's Top Gear in the lead. And Cruising USA actually fell off the cliff, folks. I don't see how it happened, but it did. Wonder Project J2 is down. Tigger's Honey Hunt out of nowhere is now our current leader. Tigger's Honey Hunt and Snowboard Kids 2 battling in this final section. Snowboard Kids 2 is slightly ahead, and I think they're going to take it. And it is Snowboard Kids 2. Tigger's Honey Hunt robbed at the last second. Whoa, Glover's up in the air. All right. Snowboard Kids 2, it has been decided. But yeah, if you're still here watching, you're awesome. Thank you so much. If you had a good time, consider hitting that like button, or maybe even dropping a subscription. Or hey, maybe even watch another one of these videos that's on screen now. And yeah, see you next time.